Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and thank you for tuning in and joining us for this Tat Shabbat this morning. Let's begin with Hine Matov, because even though we're not together physically, it's so good for us to be together in general. So Hine Matov is all about being together. What would Shabbat be without a little bit of bimming and a little bit of bombing? So get your bims and your bombs out and get ready to sing. Saturday rolls around, I start getting a particular feeling in multiple parts of my body. Now one would think this could be indigestion or a headache or something like that, but no. It is the Shabbat feeling. And I've got it in my head, down in my toes, in my heart, and frankly, all over me. So if you have the Shabbat feeling too, sing with me. I've got that Shabbat feeling up in my head, up in my head. Down in my toes, down in my toes, I got that Shabbat feeling. Down in my toes, down in my toes to stay. I got that Shabbat feeling deep in my heart, deep in my heart, deep in my heart. I got that Shabbat feeling deep in my heart, deep in my heart to stay. I got that Shabbat feeling all over me. on our opening songs, our introductory songs, it's time for us to start praying the prayers of our service. And the first one that we usually do is the bar food. This is like the appetizer of prayers, the first prayer we say before we say the other prayers. So if you're sitting down, you should probably stand up because we normally stand up for this one and join with me. Bottom. 
that we've said Baruch Hu, it's time for us to say another very, very important prayer. But the first thing we need to do is get nice and quiet. So can you go shh? And now that we're nice and quiet, put your finger on your head like you're thinking really hard and go, hmm. Try to think about what prayer we're supposed to say next. And if you think you know what we're going to say, go, ah. And let's put all that together, see if we can figure out what the next prayer is going to be. Shh. Hmm. Ah. Shh. Hmm. Ah. And if you guessed Shema, you're very smart. You're right. We're going to do that next. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai sang our opening songs, we sang a couple prayers, I think it's time for me to invite a very special friend for a very special part of this service. Rabbi Memis Fuller, are you around? It's time for the... You're here! Fantastic! It's time for the Torah service. This Torah to you. Do you mind doing a little walking and dancing with the Torah? Sure. and kiss the Torah as it comes by, but because we don't want to spread any germs, we'll blow kisses. So if you're watching this at home, why don't you blow a kiss to the Torah? Or you can wave. Or you can wave. Both work great. So now that we've taken the Torah out, marched it around, sang a song for the Torah, it's time for us to have my favorite, favorite, favorite part of the service, story time. Just hang in there a moment. I want to put the Torah scroll down in a safe place, and I'm going to come back with a special story that relates to this week's tour portion. I'll be right back. Look how you all waited so nicely. So the story I want to share with you today, it's called The World Needs Beautiful Things. And one thing that I love about this story is the illustrations and another thing I love about the story is it was written by a friend of mine Rabbi Leah Rachel Berkowitz and it was illustrated by Danielle Fabry. The world needs beautiful things. From the time he was a little boy Bitzalel loved to collect things. His eyes were drawn to shiny stones colored strings, and even a bug if it had shiny, shimmering wings. Bitzalal brought each treasure home to his beautiful things box. Bitzalel and the rest of the Israelites were slaves in Egypt. The taskmasters grew angry when Bitzalel dropped bricks into the mud to pick up a scaly piece of skin shed by a snake. Stop that, his friend shouted. You'll get us in trouble. Besides, you don't need all those stone strings and bugglings. Bitzalel just smiled. Each of these things is beautiful in its own way, and the world needs beautiful things. So do you think right here, this scaly skin from a snake that shed, do you think that's beautiful? Bitzalel did. Bet it was shiny. Bitzalel never stopped searching for beauty and color. 
When his life felt gray, he took out his beautiful things box. He pressed smooth stones to his cheek and wrapped colorful strings around his fingers, forgetting for a moment that he was a slave. One day, Fitzalel heard amazing news. Pharaoh was allowing the slaves to go free, but they would have to leave Egypt immediately. The Israelites hurried to pack for their journey. Fitzalel's parents begged him to leave the beautiful things box behind. We can only take what we can carry, said his father, and what we absolutely need, said his mother. You don't need all those stone strings and bug wings. But Fitzalel insisted, each of these things is beautiful in its own way, and the world needs beautiful things. Fitzalel took his beautiful things box and walked with the Israelites to freedom. Fitzalel saw many beautiful things as the Israelites left Egypt, the bright full moon lighting their path. Can you see the moon here? Looks like it's full. Walls of water on either side of them as they crossed the Red Sea. Pillars of fire and cloud that guided them on their journey. These things were too big for the beautiful things box, so Bitzalel tried to collect them in his mind. Mm. He also found many things that he could put in his beautiful things box. Stop grabbing things out of the sand, moaned his parents. You don't need more stone strings or bug wings. But Bitzalel gripped his beautiful things box and kept walking. One day, God called to Moses, the leader of the Israelites, I want you to build a mishkan, a place for me to dwell when I visit the Israelites, God told Moses. It will be like a beautiful room in your house for a special guest. Moses was flustered. Where are we supposed to find what we need to build your house, God? We left Egypt with nothing, and we're in the middle of a desert. The Israelites can bring me gifts, God said. Gold, silver, and copper, strings of blue, purple, and red, wood, oil, and spices. Well, what if they don't have anything beautiful, Moses asked. Everyone can find something, God promised, if they know where to look. The Israelites surrounded Moses as he came down the mountain. What does God want, they asked. God wants us to build a house out of beautiful things, said Moses. There was silence. How could they build a house for God with only what they carried out of Egypt? God suggested string. Does anybody have string to help us get started? Asked Moses doubtfully. I have string, said a small voice. Everyone turned to look as Bitzalel stepped forward clutching his beautiful things box. I have red, blue, and purple. What color does God want? The Israelites' mouths hung open as Bitzalel spread his treasures on the ground. I remember seeing trees with white flowers on the other side of the mountain. Bitzalel added, their trunks might be good for building. I saw twisty olive trees, too. See all those beautiful things? Then something strange happened. The Israelites began to see blossoms poking out of prickly cacti and the twisty olive trees at the feet of forbidding mountains. They started their own beautiful things boxes and brought them to Bezalel. Moses ran to tell God, you were right, we found many beautiful things. God looked at Bitzalel, who was arranging stones by color and shape. Bitzalel, said God, you will design the Mishkan. Bitzalel's, port, Bitzalel's heart pounded. Me? Yes, said God, you love beautiful things. You found them in Egypt. You found them in the desert. 
you will build my dwelling place because I love beautiful things too. So Bitzalel described the beautiful images he saw in his mind, and together he and the other Israelites sketched his plans in sand. Then they started building with the materials they had collected, wood from the desert trees, animal skins dyed bright colors, and bits of metal from rings and belt buckles. And when the structure was complete, they wove tapestries, made lamps, crushed olives for oil, and mixed spices for incense. Bitzalel smiled at the finished Mishkan. This is the biggest, beautiful things box ever, he said. Now, every time God visits, there will be a beautiful place for God to dwell. The so maybe you'll think about, in your house, of creating your own beautiful things box. And you can put inside things that you find to be beautiful. And when you might be feeling a little gray or sad, take your beautiful things box and open it up. And then you can pull something out that's sure to bring a smile to your face. I'd love to hear about what things you end up putting in your beautiful things box. Close this Tat Shabbat. We're going to sing Maya Fehayom. How beautiful is this day? Maya Fehayom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thanks for watching.